Jordan Henson, thanks so much for joining us. It's um, a real pleasure, genuinely, to meet you. Thank you. Um, and behind us, we've got these kids playing football. You're sponsoring this programme to get more kids to play football. 30,000 kids involved. Are you concerned uh, that kids aren't getting enough exercise or that their parents can't pay for exercise classes? I think in the world we're living at the minute, you know, cost of living is becoming an issue, yeah. of course. Um, so to put on free sessions for kids, kids aged 5 to 11, I think is really, really important. You know, just to get them outside, running about, playing, meeting new friends, being in a team environment and things like that. I think football can give so much, especially when you're young. I mean, the smiles that it puts on the kids' faces. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, um, I think it's really special um, with, with what this, this scheme is. Yeah, and, and just in terms of kids, I was looking into it in terms of kids and exercise. And childhood obesity is on the rise. Recent statistics showed that overweight or obesity uh, in year six, so by the time kids are 10 to 11, it's 34% of children. That, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Well, it sounds a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, again, when I was a kid, you know, you didn't have so many computer games or social media on the phone, things like that. I think that's obviously evolved as yeah. time's gone on and a lot more kids like to stay in the house, play, play on computer games yeah, and stuff, which has been... It which has been the case for a long time, but I think it just increases. But I think stuff like this is amazing, you know, to get kids out, get them playing, get them enjoying it. Um, and football is such a big part of this country. Uh, and a big part of Liverpool, eh? A big part of Liverpool here, definitely. Yeah. A big part of society here. So um, I think it's important just to come and, and make, make sure the kids are enjoying it. And you are quite unusual in the football community. There's in the sort of amount of charity work and work for the community that you do, I'm sort of thinking Marcus Rashford, obviously he's really known for the Free School Mills programme, so he's dealing with kids that aren't getting enough food and he launched that campaign. It made him a hero, a national hero, but it also made him a target. And I was wondering with the work you do, you've got this massive platform and you can do this and promote healthy living for kids and football, but it's not risk-free for you sometimes. Is there sometimes a bit of jeopardy for you in going beyond the job, going beyond the football pitch, if you like, to do charity work or, or to promote causes? Or do you just think, I'm a privileged guy, I've got this great platform and I should just do it? Well, that's it exactly, really. I'm not really bothered about what people think. I'm in a position, a privileged position, where I can help people. And if I'm passionate about something, um, then I'll do it. You know, things like this for kids. Yeah. You mentioned Marcus, who's done amazing work yeah. um, off the pitch as well. I think that's really important. I think people look at footballers as if we're not, we're not human beings. But, you know, when we were kids and the struggles that we've seen, for us to be able to give back is... Yeah, it gives me great pride to be able to come here and it's an honour to be able to try and give back to the community, not only at Liverpool, but where I'm from in Sunderland as well. Yeah, you, so you sort of feel you have a responsibility to do it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I am today with, without the, the work ethic and the things that were instilled in us as a, as a kid from Sunderland. So to be able to give back there is, is really important to me. But also Liverpool as well. I know how big football and how passionate they are about football here. Yeah. And they've given awful lot to me and to the team. Um, so again, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for me to be able to try and help and your, kids and people in this area. And your dad was a policeman, wasn't he? And uh, so did he sort of have this sort of sense of public service and you think you, that's the values you grew up with? Uh, maybe. Maybe I haven't really thought about that too much. I just think it's the right thing to do, ultimately. Um, if I'm in a position where I can help other people, um, then I don't see a reason why I shouldn't, just because people might see one or two things. Um, for me, it's about just doing what I think's right and trying to help as much as possible. And you, um, now you're very trim, you're clearly, clearly in shape, and you're still at the top of your game in terms of football. But is the, is the charity work you're doing, do you see it at some point as a bridge into a post-Jordan Henderson football world? Like this might be the sort of stuff you might do in the future, are you absolutely nowhere near that point? 
No, I think charity work is something that I've always tried to do behind the scenes and always want to be involved in and I hope that will continue right while I'm playing and obviously when I finish I'll always continue to give back um, because I feel the responsibility and I feel like I need to really yeah. and it's, it's important for me to do that so yeah definitely carry I think on. I'll just carry on as, as long as possible. But I think everyone watching this sort of Liverpool football fans and England football fans will want you to be carrying on on the pitch for a, a little while <laughs> yeah. So. so let's talk a little bit if we can about your football career. You're the Liverpool captain. Yeah. Let's just all pause there. <laughs> Take that in. Uh, you're an England player. You've won the Champion League, the Premier League title, the UEFA Super Cup. What is the dream for you? Like, what do you do next? Is it a World Cup win? I mean, the Euro finals must have hurt. Like, what's the next goal for you professionally? It never stops, really. Um, you'd think that because you win trophies, that that's your dream and you sort of wonder where you're going to go from there. But actually, it, makes you more hungry for more, to be honest. Um, so every competition that I'm involved in, um, whether it's Liverpool or England, I want to win. Um, and I give absolutely everything to try my best to help the team achieve that. But you, you have been at this for a long time. You were in the Sunderland Academy when you were just eight years old, like a little tot. Uh, you made your first team debut a decade later. You signed for Liverpool in 2011. You became captain. Did you think when you were like the eight-year-old you, did you imagine that you could do this, that this was where your destiny would be? Or did it just sort of evolve? I think it obviously evolves over time, but I've always, I've always dreamed about being a footballer. I've always dreamed about um, representing my country. I've always dreamed about winning Premier League, Champions League. Um, so I've always dreamt about them things, but you know, I'm sure there's plenty of kids that dream about that at a very young age. And I've been very fortunate and lucky enough to work with a lot of good people, have good people around us, and, um, and have the attitude and the desire to want to go and achieve my dreams. And yeah, luckily I've, I've been able to do that and hopefully I can continue doing that. But it wasn't, I mean, the thing is, it's, it wasn't always without adversity, was it? I mean, no one's career ever is, is it? I mean, in your younger days, you were really tested in the expectation of Liverpool when you first joined, and you were a pretty young man at that point, weren't you? And I think after a year of signing you, they nearly sold you, or they wanted to sell you to Fulham. That must have been, was that really difficult for you? Was that like a... At the time, at the time, it was a, diff it was a difficult moment in my career. I spoke about it a few times. So at the time, yeah, a young player coming into Liverpool, it was, it was a difficult period. But looking back, it was an important period for me developing as a, as a person. Um, it made us stronger and, and actually I wouldn't, change, I wouldn't change that path at all. I felt as though that time really did make us a lot stronger mentally um, and it's helped us deal with a lot more going forward. Built resilience. Do you think it made you more empathetic as well? Like I've noticed that you are quite cognizant. You talk about social media, like you're quite cognizant about people's mental health issues or being different and feeling excluded. I was thinking about um, that tweet you did after that non-binary fan posted about feeling scared about going to a game because they were wearing makeup, and you were really kind about that. Do you think? that that is linked back to some of the things you struggled with when you were younger? I think, yeah, I think in the, the stuff that I've, I've done in the past around mental health and things like that, that def definitely is something that um, when I look back, um, I experience difficult times. And I think when you're playing at the level that, that I am, you're going to go through tough times. Um, and the pressure is high, but that's the world we live in. And it's about how you deal with that. Uh, the processes and I was again I was lucky enough to have really good people around us um, and like and, and, and again with the with the tweet and things like that for me it's about doing the right things and um, and trying to help people and make people feel comfortable because at the end of the day football is for everyone yeah. um, and you should feel co comfortable wanting to go to watch a football game or wanting to come yeah. to a coaching session whatever it may be yeah. everybody should feel comfortable doing that but it's important because if people like you don't point that out then a lot of people feel excluded but it can put a target on your back sometimes but you're prepared to do that yeah because again it's the right thing to do in my mind you know to try and help people yeah. because I don't think it's right that people are uncomfortable going to a football game at all um, so if I can help in any small way then I feel a responsibility that that I need to do that and 
I won't dwell on this, but just in terms of the pressure, which I cannot begin to imagine what the pressure must be playing top flight, not just national but international football, you must have been very pleased about the draw against England against Germany. That was exactly what they needed, huh? Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed because I felt we were so close to winning the game in the end, but I think that was a snapshot in terms of our, the mentality of the team. I think they've had a lot of criticism um, over the last couple of camps mm. um, and performances and results that we're, we haven't had um, or that we've had um, hasn't been great and we know that as a team and, and, and you've got to go through tough times um, and I think I've experienced that over my career, you know, these tough times can actually make you go one yeah. way or the other yeah. and, um, Make or break. and I felt as though last night was, was a big moment for us as a team in terms of the mentality, I think 2-0 down against Germany, you know, Germany. it can go, it can go, um, it can go one or two ways and I felt as though we responded really well come back into the game and, and probably should have won it in the end. You're a leader, you're a leader on the pitch, you're a leader in your community and with Klopp and Southgate you also work with two exceptional leaders. What do you try to emulate uh, from both of them? Like what's the thing that you most admire about them or the thing that you try and harness for yourself in your own game or in how you live even? I think you're right, I think leadership is something that is, has got to be natural, um, but you can also improve and develop that as well. And I've been so lucky again to work with so many big personalities, yeah. big leaders, players, managers over my career, which has helped me. Um, Jürgen and Gareth, probably com completely opposite people, I would say, totally different, but have different qualities. In what way? Just. Um, I just think they're just totally different. Are they? Yeah, just totally different in terms of the way they work and the way they do things. Um, and to, for me personally, obviously, I've got a lot to, to thank them both. Yeah. Um, but especially Jürgen, since he came here and what he's done for me as a player um, and as a captain, really, and as a person, you know, I think he's helped us develop so much on and off the field. Um, and he's been a huge part in me development over the last yeah. five years or so. Why, can you give me some of how they're different though? Just like I just think that they're just in terms of leadership. When you, yeah. when, I think leadership can come in so many different forms. What so one's and I think, forceful, one's understated. I think, understated. I think Jürgen is uh, someone who will who you'll follow, um, and he's very much uh, um, charismatic. Yeah, charismatic, and you believe everything he says. He's very. Um, speaks very well in front of the, of the group and knows exactly what he wants and we all follow. Um, whereas, though, whereas, on the other hand, I feel as though Gareth um, has a different way about him and will, will involve probably players a lot more and have, get their opinions and see how they want to go about different things and, and it has a different way of, of working and, and they both work. Um, so it's it's fortunate enough and for me to, to can, be able to see yeah, both Yeah, and you can learn from different styles. Yeah. That is really interesting. I wanted to ask you about the pandemic because you set up uh, the uh, money for the NHS during COVID, uh, the Players Together campaign. It raised four million at launch. I don't know how much it ended up raising. Um, it was an incredible thing to do. The then Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, I'm sure you saw it, said around that time that for footballers should take a pay cut and play their part, right? And you, did you, I, I don't want to get really into politics here, but um, Gary Neville said yesterday that's what inspired him to get into politics. Like, did you think that was a bit of a cheap shot from Hancock? Or were you just like, I'm doing my thing, don't care what you say? Yeah, it was, it was a cheap shot, I'm sure. And might, I don't know why, what the reason was, whether or not he wanted to deflect away from the pressure that he was under or whatever. But again, for us, it wasn't... We were already in, in, the, in the process of doing stuff. Um, and, yeah, we felt a responsibility as a group of players across the league that were in a privileged position again. We can really help. And, um, and we all got together, all the captains got together, uh, raised a lot of money. There wasn't a figure Organized that. Organised by you? Yeah, well, us, I would say. Okay. We definitely I... done it. Of course, I was involved in that, yeah. but 
um, yeah, raised a lot of money. We didn't put the figures out there because, again... I was going to you ask you, I, it was four million at launch. Presumably it was a lot more than that at the end, but you don't want to say... Yeah, we, we didn't want to put a figure... We didn't want to put the numbers out. you tell me now or no. now it's passed? No, okay. because we never, we never did. And we never, we never wanted that to happen yeah, I know, because you didn't want the... we didn't. I, 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 you I, didn't I just, we thought it, it would never, be, it would never be enough, really. And we didn't want people to know what it was because I think no matter how much we raised, it wasn't so much about that. It was about everybody coming together to support people who really needed it at that time. Um, and the money went to really good causes, and we just felt as though it wasn't right to, to put out the figure. Do you sort of feel like you you sort of ramped up the NHS fund? Do you feel like that? in terms of, I know you do a lot of charity work, that the cost of living crisis is something that you feel that is an area that you're going to want to kind of lean into or do more work with in the next couple of years. If I, if I can help, definitely. Yeah. You know, if there's, if there's areas that I, can, that I feel as though I can help with, then I'll do it. Yeah. And I've got to obviously know um, the information and be really passionate about it. But if that's something that I need to help with, I know, I know LFC Foundation do a lot of work in the... Um, in Liverpool with, yeah. with, with cost of living and, and, and families and things like that, which is really good. Um, Olivia, you put her name on your shirt when you played a match against Bournemouth. How do you think what's happened to Olivia and her family's affected Liverpool? I think it affected everybody in the city, really. I think, you know, I can remember my wife telling us the story. I didn't hear it, she told us, and it really... Um, struck a chord really you know same age as my eldest daughter and I couldn't imagine the pain that the family must be going through um, so yeah so difficult which is which is why I felt I needed to, to put a message on the game because it was so close to the game yeah. um, it was a little thing I know but yeah everybody was hurting and um, it was a really tough time for the family and like I said I couldn't imagine that the pain that they're going through and just in terms of what's happening now, your dad, as I said, was a policeman. The police can't find who did it. Yeah, again, that must be too, so difficult for the family. Um, but in the end, I hope they can, and, and I hope that they do, um, because I'm sure that's what the family want. But it's such a sad thing to happen, mm. such a young age, taken far too early. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it was a, it was a, it was a, it did strike a chord when I when I heard the news. And I'm, I'm sure that um, your what you did also comforted a lot of people who were really struggling with it at the time. So I'm sure that I know you said it was just a small gesture, but it probably made a difference to people. So anyway, thank, thank you, you so much. much. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks yeah, for your thanks time. Very much. Nice really to good. Meet you. Thank you.